national elections, the stark unpreparedness of some aspirants. When you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. That's from Richmond Dial Johnson. He's a Nigerian British international trainer and executive. He's now of blessed memory. The race to a leadership seat in Asorok requires dogged, structured, and skilled politicking, thus leaving little or no room for nonchalance or any form of inadequacies. Observing the just concluded manifesto delivery in some parties' primaries, it can be deduced that the majority of these aspirants were ill prepared to defend their cause and individuality beyond politics. The world is watching and the world sees every speaker as a representative of a faction of the populace. It is believed that the art of political showmanship entails the bearer's ability to package and present values, visions and set goals on a pedestal of excellence. Despite having to surrender to button to the next fit candidate, the following has to be in place to assure citizens and the global populace at large that it is not a game of clownery. Vision precision. Ability to articulate goals and agendas properly. Define goals, consciousness of recent and past happenings of the states, empathy and awareness of the people. Lastly, the recent attack by unknown government in St. Francis Catholic Church or on those states, which left at least 70 people killed and injured. Also, the killing of a 30 year old Ahmed Usman over alleged blasphemous comments against Prophet Muhammad, peace be unto him, in the Lubu area of Abuja, Nigeria's capital city, is a call of awakening from all and sundry. As security, health care, and sound education are bedrocks to any given civilization. Political aspirants and candidates should therefore be certain about what they are bringing on board to address these issues. May the soul of those massacred in St. Francis Catholic Church Owo and other victims of violence and insecurity rest in peace. Here we are again. Mm. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, to be honest, it's what we just said. I mean, it's basically just taken out from the last conversation. Hmm. If someone has said that they're aspiring for the highest position in the country and they're given two minutes to make their case, you know, some of them spend five minutes, some maybe more, and you're not hearing... So the first thing that I noticed, like you said, about that convention is what I expected them to even start from was a minute's silence. It just shows you the tone deafness hmm. and the stark, you know, lack of empathy and thinking through and deep thinking in this country. Because in a crowd of what, 10,000, 20,000 people, or in, a, in an organization of maybe 50, 20, 100 people that put this event together, none of them thought it wise to actually give a minute silence for the you know, departed soul. Then eventually one of the candidates you know, finally spoke about it. But Throughout all the speeches, I was waiting to hear, even the one that people, and there's only to mention it, even the one that people thought was such a wonderful you know, <laughs> speech, it was just an inspirational speech. I didn't see any action points. I didn't see any, you know, tackling the issues of insecurity, of the economy. But why am I surprised? There's nothing to be surprised about. It's been seven years of, you know, stuck, you know, I don't even know what name to start to call it. But if you look at the scorecard of this government in seven years, the truth is, if you're part of this government, there's really nothing you have to say. What are you going to say? Because you've been part of government for seven years. So what are you going to say you want to do? Some guy came and said he wants to build on the legacy that, you know, <laughs> um, the current <laughs> government left. And I'm like, what are you talking what about? So I can understand why these guys actually have nothing to say. Because most of the people that are vying for this position were part of this government past seven years. So to say anything is actually to contradict themselves. Mm. Yeah. Because they've had seven years to prove that they can do something. And they've yeah. done nothing. You know, so I'm not surprised that they're unprepared. There's nothing to be prepared for. You know, but for anybody else that's been outside this party, and I expect, so unfortunately, the opposition in Nigeria is really weak, and they just get distracted with, you know, the unnecessary mundane details. I think that whoever is in the opposition has more than enough material and resources 
to deal with this, you know, with the ruling party. They have more than enough material. Just look at the past seven years and ask the people, is this, you know, what you want? You know, I mean, this is what I do for a living. So I'm not about to give anybody any free advice. There's too much material. Sure, yeah, sure. You know, there's way too much material. Sure, thank you very much, Tolu. Uh, so, Victor, you know, uh, just like what Tolu said, many of them could not articulate the idea. Many of them, just very, we just had just few of them were able to do that. Mm -hmm. And the, what touched me most was the fact that the only female candidate among them, a female aspirant among them, they give her two minutes, a lawyer for that matter. You couldn't even say something for the sake of encouraging other women in politics. Oh, you came, you yeah. ranted nothing. Run. You stepped down and you left. And then people were like, why? Women for that? No, I was disappointed, I actually. So, too much. Uh, <laughs> well, so, Victor, I know you're a life coach. You deal with why, like. behavioral. You know, you, learn, you, you talk about behavioral approach, people's behavior and their speech and their... So, how, what's, what's the advice? You know, um, we have the major... Debates coming up among yeah. candidates. So yes. this time around, we want to hear them to communicate. That. We look forward to that. What strategies and would you advise them, uh, these candidates? Before, um, I mean, maybe I will even tell the power to Lou. I'm not here to give free <laughs> advice. <laughs> <laughs> they should contact me. But anyway, the, the truth is, the reward system is so dilapidated. You know, we are rewarding mediocrity. We are rewarding moral decadence. We're rewarding ill-mannered, you know, lack of values kind of people. We're just rewarding non challenge you know, and it's a problem. Yeah, and like Tolu earlier mentioned, can we begin to think about a third first? Before we got on and said, I told you that how we think about this third first has to be very strategic. When you look at the tech ecosystem and what they had done to really disrupt, you know, traditional businesses, we must come with that kind of spirit, right? But of course, also taking cue, because the truth is, we can throw away the fact that, you know, some of these people had, you know, been working for the positions they are trying to get in for maybe 20, 20 years, years ago, yeah. 20, so it's a roadmap. But oftentimes I see we um, 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 millennials or we um, revolutionaries trying to come say, um, for your selection, I've got, I've got the clincher. I've got the strategy. We'll take over this nation. It's, you can't take over this nation in four years. You can't even take over America. It's like, it doesn't happen like that, right? So I think two things are critical. One, have a proper roadmap. And that roadmap has to be um, built in such a way that we take some intelligence. And as much as these old chaps are, you know, are knowing us, but there's some intelligence we need to draw from how they have built the political system. If you must disrupt anything, you must understand how thing works. And back to what Tulu kept saying, we don't even understand how, what's the dynamics of the, we don't understand how it works. When you talk to some, they're just saying um, um, some bogus motivational stuff, mm -hmm. which doesn't, is not technical, there's no dynamics as to how the politics works. And I tweeted something a um, few days ago, to really get things to, to really command the, the kind of power and the kind of influence. Because leadership is intentional influence. So there's no good or bad leader. There's a leader who is either good or bad, right. based on their personal values. So no good or bad leader. Osama was a leader. That's, so he oh, used sure. his skills to, you know, so, something to everybody, so you everybody. So was Obama. Let's, I mean, let's, Osama. Osama. Obama. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Obama too was a leader. So <laughs> it's about, so again, back to what I tweeted. I said three things are critical, right, to build that political influence. Number one is, you know, um, mobilization. Number two is money. Number three is structure. So you've got to mobilize. You know, you've got to have a structure. And I mean, you need money. You can't just be fully thinking that money is not important. So you can't be speaking words. So those three things are key. Can we begin to now? Because again, you can't change who doesn't want to change. You can only reinvent. OK, those that are, someone says something that the old people are irredeemable. <laughs> can we begin to recreate a new order? Can we begin to recreate a new pathway? So I think we should rethink this third first right and begin to build show me a 2050 roadmap i we may not all feature in it but sh let's i mean let's do it yeah. for the culture that, that's what i think really if you you have, that's very apt actually both of you if you check let's let's take a look at the the, the pathway of the emerge the person that emerged winner of apc i'm talking about that's what you want but if you check from some years back this man has been on the opposition to the ruling party at that time, mm -hmm. and he stayed in that line 
And if you watch his processes, his strategy, whether you like it or not, we're not here to campaign or commend him or condemn him, mm -hmm. but I, I just want to let, let's just, just look at his principles, yeah. his strategies. strategies. Mm -hmm. So like he worked a long time for this. Even though, yes, there are still some other factor of luck, God, yeah. and other things, maybe yes. money, like you said. But in this moment, maybe. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. maybe money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, this, yeah. so this is what we young people need to learn. Need and to then, more importantly, I'm going to say this to uh, our aspirants. You know, just like I quoted Richmond Dyer Johnson, the Nigerian-British <coughs> executive, is lit now. He said, when you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. means that... They give you opportunity. They, they think that it's just Nigerians that are, it's not a Nigerian affair. The world is watching. What kind of person do you want the world to remember you as? We, we were here in Nigeria, we were at least watching uh, aspirant debates in uh, America, mm -hmm. in UK, mention those countries. So you, it's not just about being the president, it's about mm -hmm. having a, um, an identity of yourself. What kind of person I am? When I come outside to speak, I speak value, I speak intellect, I speak reason. They gave you the ticket or they didn't give you the ticket or you're stepping down for someone should not stop you from communicating. This mm. is what many of the aspirants lacked. Mm. So I guess it's... To, 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 totally agree with you. You know, and I mean, I always say you can't give what you don't have. True. You know, the truth is it's actually unfair to demand from someone what they don't have. You know, so if you look at, I mean, if you look at the current situation of the country in Nigeria, I mean, the bar has been set so low the bar so is low. so low, really low. It just needs to be a thinking person, mm. you know, to sit down, analyze the issues, and then ask for solutions. I don't think that it's so complicated. I mean, the problems in themselves, solving those problems might be complicated, but I think on the, just on the face of it, the problems are obvious and we can start to solve the problems. Mm. So much has been said already about the importance of coming prepared. You don't just come to the race unprepared. Up next is Tolu. Just stay with us. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.